Hi guys, thank you for clicking on this video. My name's Aisha and this is Aisha Leanne Talks. So today I have been trusted to share somebody else's life story. So to protect the identity and the confidentiality of this person, we are gonna change her name to Ashley. Now Ashley is currently 29 years old. She was born on the 3rd of August 1993. She was actually a prem baby. So she was supposed to be born in November and was born in August. So she actually spent quite a lot of her very, very early, early weeks in an incubator. She would then go on to live with her mum, her dad and her two brothers. But unfortunately, just before her second birthday, her mother and father split and her mother went off with her two brothers, leaving her with her quite abusive father. So growing up was really quite tough for Ashley. She described her father as being not a nice man. And Ashley was subjected to physical, psychological and emotional abuse the entire time that she lived with her father, which was up until the age of 11. Now, when Ashley turned 11, her father was arrested and he got charged for the sexual assault of a 12 year old girl and was sent to prison. At this point, she then went on to go and live with her grandmother. But that didn't last very long because she says that she was becoming quite violent, aggressive, you know, she was getting temper issues. She, yeah, her mental health was really struggling and her gran couldn't really handle that. So she ended up putting her into foster care. She then went through nine separate foster homes, which means, you know, she didn't really settle in one place for very long. Now, I mean, that has got to take your toll. I know I went through foster care and I went for a few different homes, but it wasn't that many. And even I find that really difficult, you know, having no stability, having no that's permanent, always knowing that at some point you're gonna move. At some point you're gonna move. You're not gonna be here forever. Who knows how long you're gonna be there. So to go through nine separate homes, that, that must really mess with somebody's head. That, that really must. Following these foster homes, she then went on to live in two separate children's homes, which if you've watched my videos, then you'll know what the, they're like. She lived in a different children's home to me, so I didn't actually meet her, but, it would have been the same sort of situation, you know, they have locks on the doors. You can't go in and light your bedroom without the alarm waking the staff up at night and things like this. And they had quite a lot of strict rules and there was more, more people living in there and it was just like a very staff situation. It was almost like a hostel, but for children on a smaller setting. But that's what children's homes were like. And she went through two of them. When I asked her how she felt about, you know, going through all these homes, she said that going through the care system was horrendous and scary. As a young person going through the care system myself, you know, I can, again, I can completely sympathize with that. It is quite scary, especially when you don't know the people that you're living with. So you're being passed, or she was being passed from one house to another, to another, to another, which means you've then got to get to know this whole new set of rules for this whole new house. And then you move to another house straight away, which then has different people with different rules. And you've got to get to know those people. And then by the time you get to know those people, you're moving on to another home. You know, for me, it was difficult and it was three homes. For her, that must have been absolute nightmare. Like that, that, that never knowing where your home is, you know, that that's, that's something really, really tough to deal with. So that's obviously something that's gonna go on to then affect your future. One consolation is that her social worker, she did describe as being quite a lovely woman. She got on really well with her and that she was really quite understanding of her situation and of her mental health and did try and support her in the ways that she could. You know, she helped her every time she had to move to a different home, they always facilitated that. They helped her move her stuff. They helped her with her with money, you know, they would they were just generally as helpful as they possibly could be for her, which, yeah, some social workers really suck, but I'm so glad to hear that 
she had at least had a social worker that was actually looking out for her. So having gone through all of these foster homes and children's homes, at the age of 17, she was put into a shared house, which was run by social services, and that was also staffed 24 seven. So I mean, that's got to be kind of similar to going from the children's home to going to something very similar to a children's home, but just with a little bit more freedom, I think. So she was allowed to go out and not have any kind of curfew and she had a key to her door rather than having, you know, being locked into the door, that kind of stuff. So it was like a next step up, but there was still staff there 24 seven. And you know, that that's still a difficult situation to be in. You're still being monitored 24 seven. I, I can imagine her being quite, yeah, again, I lived in one of these similar homes as well, so I, I, I know what it's like to be in that situation. It was while she was living in this house that she fell pregnant with her first child. Her and her baby's dad stayed together throughout the pregnancy and she went into a mother and baby foster home. I don't know, I didn't ask, I can't remember if he went to stay in the foster home with her, but she was in this foster home. Unfortunately, this would not work out. And at the age of two, her son was unfortunately taken into the care system and ultimately was then adopted. Now, this would have been heartbreaking enough. She was now having to go through court proceedings for her son and she was left homeless so she had nowhere to go her and her partner were staying in a studio somewhere near you know center of town he then did to her something that was really 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 damaging for her mental health he told her that he was going to be going to london to go and visit his grand for a few days and she said that at that point in time something didn't quite feel right she couldn't quite put her finger on it but you know she let it slip and was just like okay cool I'll see you in a few days she went with him to the train station went to give him a kiss goodbye you know everything seemed perfectly fine he told her that he loves her gave her a hug gave her a kiss walked into the train station and then when he got on the train he took his sim card out of his phone and snapped it in half he then just never spoke to her again and never came back, leaving her to deal with all of the court proceedings all by herself. Ashley then went into a very, very deep depression. She was having a very bad, you know, psychotic break at this point and she spent an entire week just sat outside the train station waiting for him to come back just hoping that he was going to come back she just refused to move she wasn't eating she didn't shower she she just sat there for an entire week the only reason that she actually ended up leaving the train station was because somebody very close to her came and dragged her into a car which she said at the time was quite frightening but she is grateful for it now that they dragged her into this car they drove her back to their house made her shower made her eat kept her there you know just looked after her until she was feeling a little bit better like i said she did say that she found all this very very traumatizing at the time but she is very grateful to her friend for what she did for her because if she hadn't then she, who knows when she, Ashley would have actually left the train station if she ever did it was it was yeah a difficult one for her I, I can see that so following this Ashley was then put into a temporary homeless shelter which is where she then went on to meet this other guy again we're not going to do names but this guy she fell for very 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 quickly and within three months she was pregnant again and just like before she was put into a mother and baby foster home but she said that this time it actually turned out really good it was lovely being there and she actually wishes that she would have stayed longer given the situation now from here ashley moved into a flat with her daughter and her daughter's dad 
and they were there for two years from 2014 to 2016 but at that point unfortunately they split up and Ashley's daughter stayed with her dad. Following this Ashley then kind of hit a bit of a depression and was really really struggling with her mental health. She was struggling with things like self-harm and just just you know she was she ended up in hospital a few times she would start taking various drugs here and there you know it, it, it she was on a bit of a slippery slope at that very point in time and her contact with her daughter became quite sporadic she wasn't really seeing her very often and again this played a huge huge toll on her mental health you know not being able to see her kid not being in a mental state you know it it was very difficult for her for a while and then to top it all off she went and got with what she calls the most abusive man that she has ever met he would put her through all kinds of abuse physical mental you know psychological all all of it she claims that he had thrown wine glasses at her head he pushed her up against the wall by her throat and there was actually one occasion where he punched her in the face at this point in time they were also taking quite a lot of drugs together and she ended up in hospital quite a few times due to her mental health and because of her taking way too many drugs eventually one of her best friends that she had met a couple of years before managed to help her get out of that situation and he confessed that he had loved her for, for a very very long time and it turned out that she had actually had very similar feelings for him too they then got together and have been together ever since they celebrated four years in july of 2022 and they're now engaged so congratulations to them ashley said that her adult life has been quite challenging she has suffered with quite serious mental health problems with self-harm suicidal ideation she's been hospitalized more than once because of this over the years ashley has been diagnosed with emotionally unstable personality disorder cyclothemic disorder generalized anxiety disorder ptsd and disassoci disassociative identity disorder following these diagnoses ashley has had to go through you know trial and error with quite a lot of different medications all of which give quite diverse side effects she says with some of these medications she's experienced dizziness, blurred vision, headaches, worsening of the depression, feelings of emptiness and there was one medication that when she first started taking it it completely did something to her body and made it so that she could not properly stand up she was just completely unsteady on her feet couldn't get up so you know she's had to struggle with all of this trying to find the right kind of medication for her which I think is still quite an ongoing battle. Ashley has struggled in the past with intimacy with her partners, maintaining relationships, not just you know sexual and whatever relationships but also friendships too. She struggles to try and find work, keep work, to be able to tidy the house, you know just general motivation things quite a lot. She has tried various types of therapies but hasn't found anything that actually works for her but she has managed to find some ways of coping like for instance when she has a dissociative episode she says that she likes to get this really long hot water bottle or a pillow and lie down on the floor and just cuddle that until it passes and she will use kind of breathing techniques and stuff like this when she's having a bit of a panic attack and yeah she's managed to learn coping mechanisms now so she says that her mental health isn't as bad as it used to be but still life life gets its way of getting at you doesn't it but she says that besides her mental health side of things and the fact that she's now starting to struggle with her physical health she has 
I can't remember what she said it was and I didn't write it down because I'm an idiot but she has something wrong with her spine which is causing her issues with mobility but besides you know the mental health side of things and the mobility side of things which she's doing better at managing, she says that her life is now looking a lot better than it was, you know, a few years ago. She says that she's got a place of her own, she's in a relationship that's amazing with somebody that genuinely truly loves her and that she really truly loves back and she's actually now got a really good relationship with her daughter. She gets to see her daughter on weekends and that's actually a stable thing which she says is a far shout from where she was two years ago. Although, as I say, she does still struggle with her mental health, but she says that she's learned to be much kinder to herself all through obviously being not very kind to herself in the past. She says that there are still times where she feels like she's getting to her breaking point, but that breaking point never actually comes and realistically she can, she gets through it all. When asked, what would you like to tell others? She said, it gets better no matter what. It may be bad at the time and you may wanna give up. Some people do give up, but genuinely it does get better. So that brings us to the end of this video. Please let me know your thoughts down below. And please give this girl a shout out for her courage in coming forward and sharing her story because we want this to be a safe space for anybody to be able to share anything that they really want to. So if you are new here and you don't know what I do, I've been telling hardship stories. So I tell celebrity stories, everyday people stories, any kind of story that's going through the news, you know, any kind of hardship story. So if you have a story that you would like to share or something that you would like me to talk about, then you can contact me via my email or my Facebook, which I will leave linked in the description box down below. Otherwise, please subscribe and like this video. It is a free and easy way that you can support this channel. And until next time, remember to look after yourselves and be kind to everybody around you because you never know what someone else might be going through and a little bit of kindness and compassion can go a long way. Bye-bye for now.